Guys are having a good week, and uh, I wonder what this work schedule is for you guys. I and mean, you got Fourth of July on a on a Thursday. You guys just keep rolling, keep change. going. It does change. Commitment season. It's yeah. commitment season. Yeah, yeah. I'm happy to answer any questions. What do you guys? Just, just, just talk about know the changing world right now. College, how difficult is it when when it's kind of a moving target? Yes, certainly. I mean. You know, we have 16 head coaches at Auburn, and when you talk to every one of those folks, they're, they're in constant need of information as to what's going to happen in the next six, eight, 12 months. Uh, you did a very good job of saying it's, it's just changing by the minute. Um, we all know that, you know, there there's a, a lawsuit that has been settled for the the moment, but there are some some other things that have to be worked out around that lawsuit, um, and we're all just waiting uh, for for how that how that works. You know, I, this isn't about the SEC specifically; it's about really the, the Power Four conferences and you know getting those folks together uh, to forge this this brand new world is. It's going to be a challenge. It's going to be challenging, but it's got to get done. I said this over and over again, but what's really difficult for me personally is we send coaches out in the world, and there's no standard. This would be like moving the goalpost during a football game. It'd be like lowering the rim from ten feet to nine and a half feet during a ball game. I mean, we, we're just constantly changing a standard, and all we ask for is that boilerplate set of rules that everybody can abide by and, and have an equal opportunity to recruit, an equal opportunity for the student athletes um, to, to get uh, revenue sharing opportunities. Um, that's, that's what we're all waiting on. And, and, and again, I, I don't want to assign blame here because there's no blame to assign. That this is where we are. And I think eventually this, we can look back and say, this was a momentous time. It was important and good things resulted from all of this. But right now there's so much doubt. And again, we just don't have a standard and, and that's what we're all in search of. John, with the, with the scoreboard now being approved on that other side of the end zone, I know you, it had sort of referenced in the notes that you wanted to leave some space for other renovations there as well. Just, you know, what's sort of your long-term vision for, for that side of the end zone? Yeah, certainly we, there's not a part of Jordan Hare that we're not evaluating, and that's certainly the, the part when you look at it. We stand right in the, you know, at midfield, around the, the beautiful Auburn logo there, the AU. You, you do a 360 and you say, wow, that north, end zone's kind of vacant. It, there's no premium seating there, and it has a very, little bit of a, a generic look. And I don't, I don't say that to be demeaning to anyone who sits there, because I know they're great seats, but I do think we can make them better. I, I, I also think we have a need for increased premium opportunities at Jordan Hare, because you know, we, we have waiting lists for all of our premium opportunities. We just opened up a premium opportunity in the locker room club. We sold out of it in less than two weeks, um, which really speaks to the passion of our fan base for what is happening in our football program. But certainly we are leaving space in the north end zone and, and doing everything in preparation we can uh, to uh, update that part of the stadium. Now, what that looks like and what those updates are exactly, that's going to be a process for us to get done. Um, but there are a lot of folks involved with this. You know, our, our, our board of trustees has to be involved with this process. Our president, um, you know, Tigers Unlimited. Um, and, and, and going right back to, the, to what Jason just said originally, um, a project like that takes on a different dimension when you consider the economic realities we face moving forward and you know I, I think in years past you just blow into I mean just ram into these these opportunities especially premium opportunities at all your facilities now you take a little bit of a step back and say you know what <laughs> there's there's a new economic reality that we have to adjust to
when you think about the coaches that you inherited, um, the ones that you hired, you know, some relatively new, like Coach Breeze, and then some, you know, two or I guess three brand, brand new ones. Um, just kind of what, did, what do you think about the alignment and the culture of kind of your 16 head coaches? So I guess 17. Yeah, you, you know, I think this is pretty well documented. I've lived in seven SEC cities. I, I've been a part of five SEC schools. Um, I think Auburn is one of the great, I, I, I'm not even going to say secrets, but I'm just not sure the world understands how special Auburn really is. And we have great head coaches. So one of the many reasons I wanted to come to Auburn is the stable of, of outstanding head coaches we already had in place, including this guy. Um, and, and the promise of, of, a, of, of having a coach like Hugh Freeze running our, our football program and the, the Butch Thompsons, and by the way, the Nick Kleiners that we don't talk about a whole lot, um, and, and Melissa, and, and you know, who, who has a top eight, that gets lost. You know, when the men's team wins the national championship, your women's team finishes the final eight at the national championships. I was there. I think it's a little bit lost. I mean, we have outstanding head coaches, and it's a privilege to, to work with those folks. You cannot compete for championships unless you have a high level of, of coaches, and, and we certainly do it all. All right, Joe, thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, 